So we have a little bit of a set for you today. Um, Lindsay and I will be going back and forth doing a couple um, individual poems, and then we'll be ending with the rape poem to end all rape poems. So um, also, if you're looking to follow us on Facebook, um, you can just search the <laughs> Rutgers University Slam Team uh, or Google the title of any of these poems, and we'll probably show up as well. So the first poem um, is a poem I wrote titled Silence. Silence is equivalent to pain, synonymous with emptiness, a sign of loneliness. It's a simple yet powerful plan of attack, an attack meant to kill. Just because you have the right to remain silent doesn't mean you have to take the law up on its offer. And just because you hear other voices speaking doesn't mean you have to be speechless. Because every voice is connected to a mouth, and every mouth to a face, and every face has a name, and every name is important, and every body is important, and every body has a purpose. Worthy of sound, worthy of content, worthy of ideas, because ideas are associated with a brain. And a brain thinks, and thoughts need to be spoken, because when they are contained, silence is sustained. And silence kills. Its expression in chains over it, words and phrases slain, slowly sliding down the drain. Now isn't this insane? When we're all capable of sound, to allow the absence of it take over and surround each one of us in the air we inhale. Because not every message can be sent through email or flyer, or text, or Facebook note, no. Some things have to be spoken, shared, shouted out loud. So speak up for those who cannot speak up for themselves. Speak up for those who want to, but who will never find the courage or never get the chance. Speak up so that people will finally listen. Speak up to teach our children to speak up. Speak up before your mouth refuses to open and the ears of everyone else close. Thank you. Hi everyone, this is a piece I have written called An Open Letter to God. Um, it's kind of based on my experience as a child growing up in a very Christian home and not really finding that to be right for myself. Um, here we go. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. I used to reach up my small hands in Sunday service searching for God. Open the eyes of my heart, thinking that my small hands must just need to try harder, stretch further to feel him. I would force my fingertips out so far that the dry skin between them would begin to crack, but still I was singing, I want to see you. I was searching for God and clenching my eyes. I was crying while singing over and over again, I want to see you. Trying to press my heart into his hands and touch him and all the while wondering what was wrong with my hands. I went to Christian camp for five summers searching for God, and, and not once did he leave with me, try to be with me when I packed up my bags and went home. I sit there singing Bible songs around the campfire, trying so hard to grab a hold that all I held was frustration and empty spaces, but I kept trying because every single summer that I went to camp, I swore that I could almost taste it like the sweet tip of the tongue sensation, so I'd, I'd close my eyes and I'd chase it, but time after time, it faded. I pray to a God that I never found for patience. How has every other person here managed to find this? And why am I the misfit in this situation when I'm, I'm trying so hard? I'm, I'm trying so hard that I'm, I'm crying. Since I was seven, I've been singing, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. The top of my fingertips without any answer. Why hasn't he responded to me? An answering machine after answering machine, I'm beginning to think that maybe he doesn't give a shit. God, you are the almighty. Hypocrite. Because your own book promised, seek and you shall find me. Knock and the door will be opened. Dear God, if you're there, then please take your all-knowing list off the shelf and, and turn to the page that notates every time that I got 
lost looking for you. Every time that my hands fell numb reaching for you, can you even tell me how many tallies are next to the phrase she stood on your doorstep shivering? Could you see that my knuckles are bloody from knocking so long? Love, Lindsay, an atheist with a little bit of optimism left. All right, so the next poem um, that I have for you is titled, Enter Humanity. Let's enter an inner city. Too distracting to be distracted from yourself. Loud noises, rundown buildings, it's a crazy mess. Part of me wants no part of. I want to hide, get away, just leave. But a second glance allows me to see a small group of children jumping rope after rope, jump roping and hoping for a light to guide, bright and illuminate their lives and show all they can be. And my heart skips a beat with the beat of their feet, jumping but hurtling so much more. Enter a homeless shelter, mostly filled with older men, mostly of a race different than mine, which I'd like to think is rather benign, but once again, makes me want to hide, get away, just leave, never met them before and won't meet them again. I kind of begin to comprehend their struggles. Tempted to walk away, I stay. Even though I'll never know exactly what they face, I try to trace the dirt, the loss, the shame. And then with a double take, I see their smiles through hearty laughter as the sense of community forms in the midst of identity crisis and the kind of shame only society can inflict. Genuine human connections exist here. And I wonder why I ever thought they wouldn't. Enter a nursing home, an unfamiliar smell, People sitting, not talking, seems boring as hell. The blandness, the silence, nothing to hear, see, or do. But as I turn the corner, enter an elderly woman's room. I see a picture of her and her family, two children mounted on her lap, warm hands on her shoulder and patting her back, thankful for her life. The life that sits peering out her window, out to a world she knows too well. And at first, I couldn't tell. And inside, I yell at myself for not seeing her picture, because my picture is just a photograph, a grandmother I never knew. But we are connected. Our pictures are one, at first hesitant, fearful, torn, but at second glance, open, accepting. We are born as one, but grow disconnected by mislabeled labels, living situations and experience. We must be reminded we are comprised of the same ingredients. When we finally see, we create a recipe no cook would believe a delicious dish of humanity and all we can be. Enter a special education classroom and realize how special each and every child really is. Enter blind woman, she can't see me, but we see each other for who we are, human. Enter a man dancing in a dress, and when you see him dance, you feel the freedom the loose fabric provides. If only the rest of the world was loose enough to share and feel this freedom too. Yes, you and me, it's us together, we, a whole, complete. Take a second glance and you'll see. Let's enter. Thank you. Hi, my name's Dan from Jersey. I don't know any of the streets. I got lost on my way here. I have no idea where I parked my car. We also met about 10 minutes ago, so here we go. This is uh, The Way I Am by Ingrid Michelson. are falling and I would catch you you need a light I'll find a match cause I love the way you say good morning and you take me the way I am if you or chilly here take my sweater your head is aching I'll make it better cause I love you more than I could ever promise and you take me the way I am I'll buy you Rogaine when you start losing 
leaves in all your hair so on patches to all you tear cause I love the way you call me baby and you take me the way I am and you Now for our last piece. Uh, thank you, Dan. Thank you. Uh, this is the poem we were asked to perform initially when we were, when we were brought here. So um, we're very excited to present this piece for you. Yeah, just another quick intro. Um, trigger to, warning? Well, trigger warning for content. But um, this, is, this is the piece we were asked to perform today. Um, we wanted to sh showcase a little bit of our other poems. They didn't necessarily perfectly connect with trafficking or domestic violence or sexual assault, um, but they were about struggle and um, finding purpose and understanding, and we thought they connected in some way. And also, you might be <laughs> wondering why we had a song in our poetry set. We had one of our members who was going to be performing. We wanted to fill it in with another one of our uh, talents in the group. But our final poem, like Lindsay said, um, is the rape poem to end all rape poems. So trigger warning if you are the victim of any uh sexual crimes, um, but we hope this will still speak to you um, very personally. We are in his room after the party, the lights dim. A few drinks in and everything was warm and smoothed over. Then this moment was quickly punctured by supposedly sweet whispers that felt like barbed wire. Trust me. Come on. Don't you love me? His hands pushed me back. Warning. Warning. It's that time again. Time for another rape, rape poem. poem. The audience sighs, shifts back in their seats. Oh boy, you say these bitches are about to go off. Off about rape and pain. And no. I said no. He, he didn't, didn't listen. listen. And you ask, why another rape poem? Didn't, didn't I, I just hear like, like three of these? these? Yes. You probably did. Unsurprising in a country where someone is sexually assaulted every two minutes. What's surprising is the shit people get for telling their stories. They are all lumped into one category. Rape, rape poem. poem. As if trauma is a trope. Violation a cliche. All the while you sit back and ask. Why so many damn rape poems? We wouldn't need so many damn rape poems if America had listened the first, first time. time. These poems are our prayers to beat the fucking odds in this country of apple pie and roofies. We wouldn't need so many damn rape poems if our bodies were ours alone. We wouldn't need so many damn rape poems if everyone knew what no meant. We wouldn't need so many damn rape poems if Budweiser stopped selling our bodies stretched across the six pack. And maybe we wouldn't need so many damn rape poems if everyone would just List listen to, to this, this one. one. But it seems to us these lessons have yet to be learned. Don't tell me she was sober enough to make a decision. Don't tell me to pity him for facing consequences. You complain about another rape poem. But this is all part of a culture. The rape poems, poems will, will continue, continue until I can wear whatever the fuck I want and not be called a slut. Until I can trust my drink to someone at a party when I need to take a piss. Until I can walk alone on dark streets and not be catcalled. Who's your daddy? Get back over here. Ow, ow. Damn, look at that ass. Until I can wear heels without being asked who I'm trying to impress. Until my voice speaks louder than my outfit. Fit. Until I'm not expected to carry pepper spray on my keychain. Until no really means no. no. Until rape means crime. Until, Until woman means human. human. The rape poems will continue. Until there's no damn material left. Thank you very much. <laughs>